This is a public service announcement. After like nine years in this rescue dog business game, some of y'all need some help. Tip number one, do not half-ass your application. And think about if you were trying to apply for a job, would you just use like one word answers on the application? Would you not answer questions on the application? No, you wouldn't. You would use complete sentences. Don't write one word answers. Don't write incomplete, grammatical error filled, nonsense garbledygook. First, second, use <laughs> actual references that are going to have something nice to say about you. Furthermore, I can't even tell you how many applications the references never even call me back. Don't put someone as your reference if they don't, don't answer their cell phone. I mean, okay, I don't answer my cell phone, so like, hold up. But they need to check their voicemails. If they don't check their voicemails, or if they can't check their email and follow through, don't put them as a reference. A lot of people, a lot of rescues I know ask for like at least two references. It shouldn't be that hard to list two people that can speak to how you are as a pet owner. Like think about that before you fill out the freaking application. Tip number two is don't be dumb. <laughs> It seems so simple. All of these seem so obvious to me, but they're not obvious to everyone else clearly, which is why I'm doing this. Don't be dumb. Don't send an email to the rescue and ask if the three month old puppy that you're interested in is potty trained or if it chews on things. Yeah, it does. It's a fucking puppy. That's what they're supposed to do. If you had to take your child to like a daycare or something and the daycare was like, mm, does your baby cry? Like you would just turn the fuck around and leave because obviously this person doesn't know nothing about no damn babies. The same thing applies when you're trying to adopt a dog. Don't ask silly questions like that. Or <laughs> uh, if the rescue says that a dog is blind and you feel the need to email them and say, how blind are they? How do you even expect anybody to begin to answer that question? One, dogs can't talk. Okay, we can't actually put them, ask them to read the letters and numbers and shit off of the wall and grade how good their eyesight is. The vet can tell if they're blind or not and we say they're blind, they're fucking blind. What details you're looking for beyond that, I don't even know. <sighs> another example, another example, another example. Mm. Can't tell you how many times I've seen someone be on Adopt-A-Pet, see a dog that says, oh, this dog is seven years old, seven pounds, loves other dogs, loves children. They'll hit, let me send an inquiry to this rescue and ask about this dog, and what are they gonna ask me? Oh, do, how much does it weigh? And do you know if it's good with like kids and dogs? You know what, don't. I get a little bit beside myself. It's just like, I don't know if you're, blind or dumb or lazy. Like I just can't figure out which one of those things it is in those situations. You need to understand that these organizations are run by volunteers, which means people have full-time jobs outside of the rescue. They have their own kids. They have their own friends, their own lives. All of it is volunteer time. You really think that the best use of a volunteer's time is to be answering your dumb questions that are already written that you're inquiring about? Like, do a little bit of due diligence if you're really interested in a dog. Try to find their profile. Try to see if there's posts about them on social media. Don't just be lazy. Number three, don't be cheap. <laughs> this one I think makes me it gets me like the most instantly irate is if a dog's adoption fee is 250 and someone's like, oh, well, is there any wiggle room in that? Like, can I talk you into being lower? Um, excuse me, sir? This dog was found roaming the streets, eating garbage. Maybe it was abused. Maybe it's from California. Maybe it's from Tijuana. 
but please know that rescues are putting time, money, and effort into getting these, pulling these dogs from bad situations, feeding them, vetting them, spaying or neutering them, finding them foster homes, forever families, and you want to come in and argue with them about a $250 adoption fee. Are you serious? Are you serious? Truth be told, if you can't if you can't afford to spend two to four hundred dollars on an adoption fee for a dog, you can't afford to own a fucking dog. There's so many things that go along with getting a new dog. That if you buy it from a pet store or a breeder, you're still financially responsible to do all of those things. When you adopt from a rescue, all of that shit is done for you. So no. <laughs> There's no wiggle room on the adoption fee, okay? And to ask for a discount to me, and I'm not, I don't even run a rescue. Like I, ha I intentionally don't wanna run a rescue. I just wanna volunteer. <laughs> but to me, it is an insult and a slap in the face to everyone who's busting their ass and breaking their hearts every single day to save these animals. And you're saying that it's not worth it essentially by asking that question. Number four, don't be in a rush. It does take some time for an application to come in, for someone to see it, for someone to call references, all of these things to happen. And furthermore, the goal of a rescue is not just like adoption rates. Like how fast can we bring in a dog and how fast can we adopt them out? That's not what they care about. That's what shelters care about. That's the niche that they fit. Rescues care about finding the perfect fit for that dog. It's not always gonna happen right away. If you're somebody who's like, oh, you know what? I really want a puppy this weekend. Rescue's not for you. It's number five. Don't be an asshole and don't take the process personally. As I said before, it is about making a good, connection for the dog and the person. Lifestyle matches, permanent homes, no returns, no dogs being adopted and ending up back in shelters, none of that. It's like a forever match. So many people want to get upset at the questions that are asked in rescue applications or the rules that rescues have because they're like, ah, excuse me, like I'm such a good dog parent. Like I would make such a loving home. And like by you saying that I have to be a homeowner in order to adopt that pit bull, like you are just taking a perfectly good home away from this dog and blah, 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 blah. Don't pop off like that. No one cares, really, no one cares. You get emails like that and everyone just rolls their eyes and probably won't even respond and just keep it moving. Like you're not getting anything accomplished by being rude and by sending annoying pestering emails to rescue groups. You're getting nothing accomplished. And there are great people who adopt these dogs and I can speak like I've had amazing adopters for some of my fosters, like really, really awesome people. But all of us also need to be real about the fact that the reason that, how many is it? Almost 7 million pets enter a shelter annually is because of people. So don't be mad that a group whose sole responsibility is to rescue animals from people who have fucked them over, that they're not gonna be pretty strict about what people they release these animals to in the future. It's pretty logical, it's total common sense. But people like to get their ego involved and get their panties and like a big giant wad in their ass and they need to calm down. If you wanna have a bitch fit about it, call your friend, call your auntie, talk to the wall if you want to. But don't write a spiteful email to a rescue group. Ultimately, if you don't want to listen to any of these tips, if you don't want to have a home check, if you don't want to jump through hoops to adopt a dog from a rescue, go to your local shelter. 
where do you think that the dogs that rescues have are coming from? They're not pulling them out of their ass. And I used to volunteer to shelter. All you have to do to go adopt a dog at a shelter is fill out an application. If you rent, they're probably gonna ask for your landlord's number to call them, and then you get the dog. And the adoption fees are always way lower. I have friends who have adopted straight from shelters. I have friends who adopted from rescues. I have fallen deeply, madly, truly in love with so many shelter dogs. I fell in love with the breed of pit bulls by volunteering at the shelter. I had never really heard of them before or seen them before. And I just went there because I was looking for a way to volunteer and I'd always loved animals and I'd always only grown up around little dogs. And I walked down the aisle with all of the cages on either side of me and I saw these fat sexy meatheads and I was like who are these dogs I love them so much it took me a long time to even understand that people were scared of pit bulls so I'm always just like here's me only liked little dogs had no experience in dog training and have only worked with shelter pit bulls who Suppose you know, there's like the misconception that shelter dogs are like damaged. I've never been bit, I've never been scared for my life. <laughs> Adopt from a shelter. We don't need to support people who want to use animals' bodies to pay for their livelihood. <laughs> I think it's just, with so many animals being euthanized every single day, to go and buy a dog from a breeder is, saying that all of the dogs who are killed every day in shelters don't matter and that they're not worth it and like how how could you how could you say that it's sickening to me that people still just want like more of them just so they can have like their one specific kind of thing you know, I knew someone who wanted a lab, and I'm just like, oh my god, there's so many lab rescues. Like, there's a lot of breed-specific rescues also, BT-Dub. If you want a specific kind of breed, go on to Google and type in blah, 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 breed, rescue, and I'm sure you will find something. But it was like, she, they couldn't go the rescue route because it's like her husband wanted, like, a lab, but with, like, this particular kind of head and this size of feet, and it's just like, <laughs> are you fucking serious? Imagine if that's how we treated each other. Imagine if because you were divorced or because you had an ex-boyfriend that nobody wanted to touch you because you were considered damaged goods. Imagine if somebody didn't want to pick you because your hair wasn't the exact color blonde that they were looking for. I personally am far more interested in finding a dog that has a personality that fits my family and my lifestyle than I am obsessed with a breed or a color or anything like that, okay? I mean, to anybody who's really like owned a dog and really had like the love and the connection of a dog, you know it's not because of the color of its hair. There's some sort of like indescribable quality that connects you to another being. And you need to not focus so much like on the external things. Like I'm so beyond excited for there to now finally be like a rescue dog show because watching the dog show before where it's like, oh, the snout should be this long. And like, the, like, what are you talking about? The snout should be this long according to whose fucking definition? You mean the people <laughs> who decided to like come in and fuck with nature so that we can morph these dogs to look very specific ways because like we think it's cute? No, 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 no. So if you bought a breeder dog and you literally just didn't know any better, I ain't mad at you. I thought that dogs came from the pet store or like in the newspaper. Like that's where I just thought dogs came from. Once I learned and like opened my eyes to how many dogs are suffering and how many dogs are killed and how many dogs are purebred and how many dogs who are like perfectly behaved. <laughs> I mean, I've gotten in fosters that have come from shelters that they know how to sit, shake, potty train, crate train. Like, I can't even comprehend why anyone would dispose of them. Like, not even any behavioral issues. If you're someone who has friends and family who has a rescue dog and you know about shelters 
and rescues and you just felt like going to a breeder because you wanted this very specific kind of dog, shame on you. It's basically the way I feel about it. So <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Like, and to clarify this whole homeowner thing, like, cause I also have seen a lot of people get really butthurt about that. There are a lot of rental places that even though they allow dogs, they have breed restrictions. Apartment complexes, people who own homes, etc., etc. The dogs that you will normally find on this list are bully breeds, Rottweilers, Dobermans, sometimes German Shepherds. So for a rescue to ask that one of these breeds go to a homeowner is merely trying to ensure that it's not it's another situation of like oh i'm living in this one house that will allow my pit bull but if i ever have to move to another rental i promise you it's difficult like i hate that it's difficult hello pit bull lover i have to myself but it is difficult so people with the best of intentions still rehome their dogs for really dumb reasons. I've always just been a volunteer and I can't even tell you how many people who have hit me up on Facebook. Oh, I see you foster. Oh, my friend has to move and has to get rid of their pit bull. Like, could you take them in or could you help them? Or, oh, my friend had this happen. They need to get rid of their dog. Can you like, <laughs> it's annoying. I can't even imagine how like legitimate actual rescues feel. Cause I'm just like one little person that nobody even knows about and people still bug me. A, getting a pet is a lifelong commitment for the life of that pet. Ups or downs, good or bad. If in the rare circumstance that you cannot see it through, it is your responsibility to find another loving home for that pet. Rescues are out there saving dogs from abuse and neglect and breeders <laughs> don't even get me started on breeders so like people are like oh, i need like a purebred blah 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 Do you, they, they're like oblivious to the fact that so many purebred dogs get thrown away by breeders all the time because they have some little like a defect wrong with them even though it's like not a legitimate defect the point is that rescues are busy handling real shit dealing with real issues pet owners writing to rescues and saying, I'm moving, I need to find a place for my dog. And if I don't find a place for them by the end of the week, like I'm just gonna dump them at the shelter. Like that's a real thing. <laughs> People really actually have the fucking balls to write that shit out and send it out to groups in the city. And I just, if no one's told you before, that's gross, you're gross. Don't do that. these puppies cry in their crate, crate training. I feel like I need to just stop talking now because this video could literally be 72 hours long.